This show is made possible by the patrons at patreon.com. Today I'll be talking about a particular type of randomness and how it affects games as I've defined them in previous episodes. In games, randomness is a label that we put on game variables which we not only can't predict, but which we are never intended to be able to predict. Randomness does not mean literally unknowable. Randomness is a shorthand for things in games which are both practically unknowable and that are also never meant to be known. When we roll a die, we're not supposed to be able to even partially figure out how it's going to fall. This stands in contrast to other game elements which we are meant to gradually learn and understand and master over time. Not all randomness in games is the same. For example, many strategy games have a kind of random start or random map generation, but are otherwise mostly or totally deterministic. For this kind of randomness, I use the expression input randomness. It's randomness that informs the player's decision. At the other end of the spectrum, we have randomness that decides the outcome of a decision. Most often, this is found in the form of dice rolls. I call this kind of randomness output randomness. Input and output randomness exist on a spectrum. While the middle can be a bit hazy, the ends are very easy to identify. Essentially, the question is, how close is the randomness to the point of your decision? In the case of map generation, that's probably as far away as it can get. All players know this information from the moment the game starts. Slightly closer would be something like face-up cards that draw out every few turns. In this case, you probably have a few turns to respond to the information, so I'd still call that input randomness. Slightly closer, depending on the game, might be card drawing. This happens usually every turn, but it doesn't always affect you right away. Finally, we get to randomness that squeezes in after you make a decision, which determines the outcome. At this point, we're talking about pure output randomness. You have literally no time at all to respond to this random information that just entered the game. As I've mentioned in previous episodes, the way that games work is by taking a decision, processing it, and then giving the player feedback. A problem with output randomness in general is that it can actually deliver incorrect feedback, that a bad move was good or that a good move was bad. For instance, let's say that the optimal move in a war game is to attack here with this unit. If there's a dice roll that determines the success of that, and it comes up as a failure, it can give the player confusing, noise-based feedback that suggests that this play wasn't optimal, when actually it was. Playing a game is a process of climbing a mountain and making connections about how a system works. As I mentioned previously, deep games allow for a lot of this, but deep games are also very difficult to design. It's much easier to design a shallow game and then blur out the feedback so that the game seems unsolved when actually it's solved or very close to solved. Humans are pattern-seeking animals, and highly random games exploit this constantly. We imagine that some move we made was genius or a brilliant read, when really it was just dumb luck. We imagine that these games have all kinds of crazy possibility space, when really all these creative plays might just work out due to random outcomes. Designing a game with heavy randomness also makes it difficult for us, as designers, to see whether our game really has depth or not. For that reason, I advocate avoiding output randomness as much as possible in game design. Thank you for watching.